Welcome to the latest edition of Mob Talk Sit Down. I'm Dave Stratwise. And I'm George Anastasia. George, a one-two punch from the feds here in Philadelphia and South Jersey, and a new ruling body for the Gambinos up in New York. Yeah, question is, is this a beginning of something or just an isolated incident? We'll see. All right, George, let's start here in Philadelphia. The indictment this week of Stephen Sharkey, a mob associate, right. uh, wire fraud, money laundering, identity theft, not a good start. It could lead to other things. Yeah, and the shark is a guy who's been there before. He did. He got sentenced to five years back in 01 in the, the big Merlino trial. He pled guilty before the trial started. He's an associate of Merlino, of George Borghese, of those guys. And uh, he's gotten jammed up again. And it looks like it. this was something we knew was coming. It's been in the works for over two years. And it just was a question of when were the feds going to drop the hammer. And the interesting thing is why did they choose to do it now? Right. Is it, is it that they just couldn't take it anywhere else. I mean, I think they hope to go further with this, or is this the beginning of something? Because he's he's not a high-level guy. Why him and why now, as you said? Uh, is this a little poking by the feds trying to unnerve the organized crime figures here in Philadelphia? Well, you know, if we want to talk about the pattern of Mr. Breslin when he was up in New York, you'd do bits and pieces and put it all together. Right, that's could, Mike Breslin, the head of the organized crime right. strike force here in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, it, that could be it. Or it could be, you know, they. I know they were working on Sharky for almost two years. Maybe it reached a point where they said, this is all we're going to get. Let's take it. Let's go with it. Um, you know, he's, he's also got a problem over in Jersey. So he's looking at probably, I would, I would guess, four or five years, given the charges in this case, if he's convicted, and given his background. Um, and it, it's, he's kind of the, Sharky described Describe him. He's, him. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, kind yeah. of the Nick Caramondi of the 21st century. I mean, Caramondi was a consummate con man for the Scarfo crime family back in the 80s, just working all kind of angles. Um, never made a legitimate dollar. He was, I, I guess, better at making an illegitimate dollar. Now, people who know Sharky say he's an intelligent guy, he's a smart guy. Problem, part of his problem, apparently, is he always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And I think that works against him eventually. So, you know, he's gotten jammed up here. The one thing people say about him is, you don't trust him, uh, you know, he's a scammer, but he's not gonna be a cooperator. They don't have any problem with that. He's a stand-up guy, that's at least the, the reputation he has on the streets. So I, my estimation is the feds were working him, working him, working him, hoping maybe to flip him. And it didn't work out, so they said, all right, here, here we come, we got you. All right, there's uh, some initials in there. AA, who appears to be mentioned 30 times in a 26-page document. He's not charged here, right. but he clearly is in cahoots with Sharkey in this, allegedly, according to the paperwork. Well, yeah, unindicted co-conspirator, what does that mean? Was he, he was part of, the, part of the scam or he got used? We don't know. Best we can determine, he's in the mortgage business. And we know the feds were looking at mortgage operations involving wise guys here in Philadelphia the last three or four years. So I think it might relate back to that. But again, it comes back to this is the charge they've brought. Is there more to come with this or is this all they were able to make? So are they going to go further into organized crime figures with this? We know they had at least two mortgage shops kind of set up here in Philadelphia. Right. One lasted about eight or nine months and closed. The other one lasted six to eight months and closed. Yeah. That kind of thing. We're, we're going to watch and see where that goes if they can push it that far. Oh, I mean, that's the thing. Or have they pushed it as far as they can and this is the end of it? All right. Cooperation-wise, you don't think he's going to cooperate? I don't, everything I've been told about this guy is he's, he's not a guy you want to go in business with, but he's not. He's a stand-up guy and he's not going to cooperate. All right, but this has sh shaken up the guys. There's no oh, doubt yeah, about I mean, it. It's, it's buzz it's, all over the place. You know, it's clear the feds are watching everything and on top of everything. And this is just one example of it. Okay. All right, George, let's travel across the Ben Franklin Bridge here to Camden. Earlier this week, I was in court to watch Sal Piccolo plead guilty to a drug and fake pawn shop ripoff. Not good for him. No, and this, again, we knew this was coming. This has been a year in the making. He and his uh, co-defense were arrested over a year ago. Um, it looks like he's looking at maybe 10 years, and this is a guy who's in his 60s. Not, not good at all. Again, this is a guy who's been around. He knows a lot of guys. He's done a lot of things. He got caught up in that case over in New Jersey where uh, and a, an undercover FBI agent was introduced into a drug operation and there was a lot of recordings and it looks like, and we've been saying this all along about this case, the tapes are so good everybody's going to plead out. It look, looks like that's the way it's heading right now. He participated according to the documents in three separate sales to a undercover FBI agent. Right. One of them was in a Buffalo Wild Wings parking lot over in South Jersey. We visited there before. Uh, but three drug cases, about $12,000 in drugs. 
That's a 10-year mandatory minimum life. up to life. We don't think he's going to get that. Talk to me about that. That's serious stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is indicative of how good this case was, that, that the feds had this thing wired up, audio and video. And, and, and the fact that these guys are pleading out indicates that they can't fight this case. That's how strong the evidence is. And Piccolo has been away before. He's going to go away again. And it's the same kind of situation as with Sharkey. Everybody says he's done some things. He's, you know, he's, he's an outlaw, but he's not a cooperator. And they, they don't, most of the guys I'm talking to are not worried about any cooperation out of the, the defendants in these cases. All right. He is uh, identified by the feds as a mob soldier, a right. made guy. Right. He's also got some bloodlines past and current. Talk to us about that. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, Anthony uh, Piccolo was the consigliere in the Scarpo era. The Piccolo brothers back in the Bruno era were major mob capos, so it's a, he's almost third generation uh, organized crime in Philadelphia, and the Piccolo name has always been part of the, the organization. So yeah, he's got uh, the bloodlines that go back, and again... He's got is, some current bloodlines, too. Well, Talk about that. Yeah, That's I mean, Dominic Grandy. Yeah, well, Dominic Grandy is kind of the, the individual who's hovered over top of this investigation. He's, he's been referred to in the affidavit that the FBI filed, He's been mentioned in, in uh, some of the wiretap meetings, the, the transcripts. I think he's picked up on some tapes, but he's not been charged. And uh, the question is, that case in Jersey is winding down now. Is something going to happen over here in Philadelphia to bring some of that here? Or are there other individuals and, and other cases, other investigations? You know, Dominic randy has been around for a long time. He's a young kid. Just turned 40 at a birthday recently. Been mentioned a lot in, in a lot of different uh, investigations. You call him the Teflon Dom, you know, I mean, that's... that's Dude, I've been hearing that, uh, Teflon Dom. You right. like that name? Yeah. I don't know if he, he likes mob it. names. He yeah, might not yeah. like that name, but, it, it's, but yeah. it's a good thing for on, in his well, case. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy who's always been mentioned and never been charged. All right, you talked about this may be going further. In the courtroom, as I sat in the back the other day by myself with no one else in the courtroom, Grady O'Malley shows up. He's the special counsel in Newark, New Jersey, to the Organized Crime and Gang Task Force up there sat in the number two chair while Pat Askins handled the whole case from the number one chair. Why is he there? He never spoke the whole time he was there. Yeah, that begs the question is what, you know, is he coming down just to, he's on a trip? He wants to take a little drive down to Camden? Yeah. Or is there a reason why he's coming down? You know, the, the situation is, is there more in Jersey besides what we've seen so far? Like a case out of Newark, maybe? On exactly. The, on the North Jersey faction of the Philly mob. You got to wonder about that. I mean, here's a guy, uh, he's been around forever. He knows all the players. And I don't think he would just take a drive down to Camden just to sit in the courtroom. Right, he also tried Joey Merlino a couple times and he didn't win. Unsuccessfully. So this might be yeah. another opportunity maybe. Yeah, I mean, these, these guys are certainly aware of Philadelphia. They're aware of the Philadelphia Newark connection. They're always trying to connect those dots. And this is a guy who has that historic men, men, memory. I mean, he knows these guys. He's been around long enough to put all the pieces together. Okay. George, another road trip. Let's go up to New York for a couple right. of minutes here. Interesting news from Jerry Capisi from gangland.com this week about who's running the Gambino crime family after the death of Frank Cali. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, Jerry had a piece in his column yesterday about who it is, and, and it's, a, it's a situation with the Gambinos where they don't put out a float chart, you don't really know, but there's speculation that I think Lorenzo Menino is one of the guys who was mentioned that's in part of the hierarchy, a guy named Cefalu. Dominic Cefalu, who he's, Cefalu, he's right. the, was believed the boss, to be the boss. Right. And, uh, a 75-year-old veteran, yeah. Paradiso. Yeah, uh, Michael Paradiso. Michael Paradiso. Mikey boy, Mickey boy. Right, according to Jerry, these three guys are the kind of the ruling triumphant of, of the Gambino crime family now. And if anybody's going to know, Jerry will. You know, it's interesting with the Gambinos, if you remember back when Lagabi went to that infamous luncheon up at La Grilla in Kearney, right. he met with a bunch of Gambinos. That's Joe Lagambi, the boss here in right. Philadelphia he for and, New York people. Yeah, he and four or five guys went up and they met with four or five guys from the Gambino crime family. Yeah. One of them, John Gambino. Now, at that point, John Gambino was identified as part of the ruling commission of the Gambino crime family. So they've done that on occasion. You know, who's in charge? Maybe one guy, maybe two guys. Uh, it, it, it's. And what's the purpose of that? Why, why three guys? Well, I think, argue, argue both sides and then the guy to break the tie? I think it's partly it's that, and I think it's the other thing, and, and you'll see this with the Gambinos a lot, is they've got a strong Sicilian faction. Yes. And uh, they're represented in the leadership in the hierarchy of that crime family. And is that Lorenzo Menino in this Were you case? Lorenzo Menino, Cefalu, uh, it was Cali, the fellow who was killed. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I think that's part of it. It's, it. it's a big organization. It's not like down here in Philadelphia where you got 
what, 20, 30 guys. Up there, you got 60, 70, 80, 120 guys. Right, and this makes everybody comfortable, I would imagine. Everybody has a say. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's it's not a democracy, but yeah, yes. you've got. <laughs> I never said you've, that. You've got input, <laughs> yes, exactly. Your guy is sitting at the table, that's what you want. Three dictators. There you go. Okay. All right, George, we wrap this up. Three guys kind of taken off by the FBI in the last uh, couple of months here right. in Philadelphia. This seems to be going somewhere. The pot seems to be being stirred by the FBI here. Yeah, this was something we've been watching and talking about for four, five, six years, and it looks like things are finally starting to happen. Okay, we'll see you next time.